Hello everybody, this is Silver Dragon from CubeTubers.com and this is my beginner's guide for the X3 series. Uh, for this uh, beginner's guide I'm going to be uh, playing uh, X3 Terran Conflict as it has ported over some of the uh, more recent bugs fixes and such from uh, its expansion. Uh, the Albion uh, Conflict, uh, no Albion Prelude, yes, Albion Prelude. Alright, so, when you first start up the game, you're going to get a little window that has uh, various settings and such you can change. If you don't have a really, really crazy computer, you're going to want to lower some of those settings, shaders especially, uh, because this is a really resource intensive game at times. Once uh, all these calculations start going on in the background later on in the game, it can just start chugging in combat. Or if you get like more than a dozen ships in combat, it is it can really bog it down. Now, uh, when you first actually get into this uh, part of the game here, of course, we have everything. We have quit, option, credit, intro, continue, new game. Uh, fairly self-explanatory what they all do. <laughs> but as we kick quick new, uh, click new game here, we have a couple of choices here. Uh, now, for the beginning, for this guide, we pretty much have two choices to make, as it is. Uh, if you want a more story-centered uh, story experience... Uh, and the possibility of getting actual free ships and such as you go through the story itself, then you're going to want to go for the Terran Defender start right here. If you want a more sandbox, like right out of the door sandbox experience, just get into the get into it. You're going to want to go for the Humble Merchant, just because it already gives you a uh, merchant ship, a really good hauler, and you can start trading right off the bat, earning a lot of money and buying some other ships. Uh, f to begin this uh, beginner's guide, I'm going to start with the Terran Defender, as it does have a uh, little tutorial in it that you can start. It's not the best tutorial, but it was better than uh, nothing we had for uh, Reunion. But anyway, I will uh, cut out now and come back when I get there. Alright, alright. Now uh, let's begin with the interface. On the uh, bottom right corner of the page is the minimap. It shows you the various uh, lines of uh, ships from the uh, base uh, of the graph. Basically, shows you the various heights that they're at, roughly. It uh, can help with uh, keeping track of uh, ships in battle at times. Uh, at the bottom of the page here, we've got uh, the targeted ship's health and uh, shield power, as well as their distance and speed. And you're all right beside it, your current health, uh, armor, distance, and speed. Well, near distance, not really, but speed. And uh, let's see here. On the bottom left, we have uh, what your current auto-aim is set to, the missile you have activated, and your various weapons that you have as well. And you can set these to, uh, in the weapons menu, to certain uh, groups, as it were. So you can fire certain weapons up to four groups to fire certain weapons at this at one time that way you can set up either two of these to fire one or all of them to fire at the same time now in order to actually uh, move around you use the uh, typical W A S and D keys uh, also helping you with this you can go talk to that uh, little glowing uh, guy over there Terran, scimitar, no, not that one. Terran. Flight school. Flight school. Saber. That is gives you a basic tutorial about these controls as well, but I'm just gonna do it myself. So yeah, W A S D allows you to strafe, uh, left, down, right, up, and such. Uh, in order to actually get out of this flight mode here, which uh, basically moves you all over the place, so you can actually access the menus. You need to hit. Uh, oh yes, and you can also rotate yourself with the Q and E keys, which is very useful. Uh, and hit, hit the space bar, and that'll let you have the uh, mouse pointer. All right. Now, uh, in order to accelerate as well, you use the X and Z keys or tab to go full on, full speed or backspace to go. Well, put on the brakes, slam on the brakes. <laughs> and of course, if you're at zero and you hold back the Z, you will go negative ten, uh, which is basically, of course, reverse. Now, uh, let's start with the actual uh, menus here. Uh, one review of uh, X3 actually said it's menus, buried in menus, buried in menus, which is actually generally true. Uh, but for now, let's actually get started with uh, just the typical options here. We got, of course, quick game, 
load game, which is Shift L, save game. Saving is only and possible says, when docked at a station or by using salvage insurance. So yes, yeah, self-explanatory. You can only actually save when you dock at a station, and it also auto saves for you. Or if you buy uh, salvage insurance from the Goner. Uh, you can also, of course, pause the game if you want to go out and do something. Really, there's not much need to actually pause the game unless you are in risk of dying. Uh, they got the controls, of course, which have the various uh, various control schemes and whatnot. Uh, script editor, interface, all that stuff. Uh, gameplay, which has the uh, SATA factor. I usually like to increase this to 10. Uh, just so that, uh, well, I really don't like waiting, flying around in space. I like to get right into the action. And uh, I use the SATA a lot. A lot. Of, some people don't don't even use it at all. That is a that's a personal choice, but I like to use it just to get from point A to point B a lot faster. All right, so let's close that. And then of course we have the audio and graphics settings, which are fairly self-explanatory. But from the graphics settings, you can't really change as much graphics at this point. You have to do that outside of the game itself when you first launch it and you get the little window. Uh, that's pretty much the main point where you can actually change the graphics. Now, other than that's that menu, uh, right here we have uh, your incoming messages. Uh, any messages you happen to get for completing missions or it didn't have or new details on missions. Uh, you can eject from the ship. Uh, I personally don't use the button. I use Shift E, which also ejects you from the ship. Uh, you can use that to capture ships and uh, get out to repair your ships and whatnot. Uh, and then we have the undock button here, which of course, anytime you're docked, you click that to exit. Uh, moving up from that, we have the, uh, oh, this is the trade one. I won't actually be able to access that. It's grayed out right now until I get inside of a station. Uh, above that, we have the target, which shows information on the target that I'm, well, currently targeting. I can use, uh, Transorbital Accelerator, Uranus 2. Put my brakes back on here. I like to select my targets by using by hitting the space bar and just USC selecting on everything. Or Spectre missile orbital defense station. And just selecting on stuff like that. I find that the easiest way. Uh, when you're in combat, there are other controls that you can use to uh, track other targets. Uh, but you can look those up in the manual there. That comes with the game. It's not too hard to figure out the controls uh, for that portion. Uh, now, anyway, or you can talk to the flight school trainer. Anyway. Uh, of course, now the targeting thing is gone. Let me load that back up again. Station. We get info on it. We can uh, communicate with it. We can see how many landed ships and owned ships are there. We can autopilot dock to it, which is kind of lazy. I, I, I rarely use the autopilot dock when I'm piloting the ship myself. Uh, we can locate it in the sector map or display it on our monitor, neither of which I really use extensively. Alright, now in the current ship uh, menu here, this is all the information on your ship. You can see your own personal information for the ship. All the stats, what uh, weapons and... The uh, Sabre is a and capable of a medium fighter that there is optimized for interception duties. I'm sure it is. Alright, now we can see the current shield capacity, our current hull, laser power, incoming everything. Message. Apparently I have an incoming message. Oops, did not mean to do that. Alright. Let's see, command of current freight, uh, how much, f what type of freight I can carry. Uh, this is important for trading, and how much of it. Yeah, that can be upgraded, although the type of freight cannot be upgraded. That is uh, set specifically for each ship. Uh, here we've got the shield bay showing uh, I have four or five megajoule shields on the ship. And uh, for the weapons, I have two electromagnetic plasma cannons and three poltergeist missiles. The technical data, I current, my current max speed is, shows, well, I'll just say current max speed, how, f how far you can upgrade it to, uh, current acceleration, how far you can upgrade it to, same thing for steering, uh, shield power, oh, shield power, where's my shield power? Uh, so max shield power is five times five megajoule shields, so I have uh, four, so I could have one more shield and then I'm fully upgraded for that. Uh, max laser energy and uh, the reload rate just shows you uh, pretty much how long your weapons are going to last and of course the current and current and upgradable cargo bay. Now, uh, you can see I have uh, four number of what this is the weapon bays right here and the compatible lasers. I have a uh, maximum of four lasers I can fire at the same time and I'm restricted to the electromagnetic plasma cannon as my compatible uh, lasers for the ship and the poltergeist missile for compatible missiles. 
Uh, below that we have the uh, installed ship extensions that show all the various uh, enhancements that we have for the ship. Looks like we have, of course, the engine tuning, rudder. These are all, all these ones here. Rudder optimization, cargo bay expansion, boost extension, duplex scanner, well, not duplex scanner, but uh, cargo bay. Up to cargo bay are the uh, upgrades basically you do for the ship itself. And then the rest is, uh, of course, boost extension, which allows me to... Uh, speed up a bit. Uh, duplex scanner allows me to see farther. Singularity engine time accelerator speed up time, which is a very useful. Video enhancement goggles, uh, they can be useful, but meh. And then below that we have our freight and freight bay, which has all our freight and of course the uh, people, with if we have any uh, passengers or if we've picked up any uh, people floating around in space. Uh, now, let's see what else we got here. We got the autopilot. We can uh, send our ship to uh, give our ship commands. Uh, tell it to attack all enemies if you want to be lazy and not do anything, just enjoy the battle. Uh, the command console has a lot of information to it, so I'll get to that in a moment. I have our freight menu here, which of course shows all our freight. We can eject freight right here if we want to uh, by clicking on it and... Uh, oh, what was it there? There we go. Clicking on it, either eject for, eject select amount, uh, whichever we want to do. But I don't want to be ejecting my shields now, that might not be a good idea. Uh, same thing, the locating sector map, display on monitor, not really that useful. In the advanced, we have our weapons menu. Uh, this is where we go to actually select our weapons, put them in the bays. We can uh, add them to different groups. Uh, if I want this one to only fire on group 2 and not the other one, I now have only one laser on group 2. I can equip missiles here, although I can also do that easily by uh, just hitting M uh, on the keyboard when not in this menu. And then we have uh, various automatic missile resupply and stuff options here. Now, let me clear out of that. As I said before, I can hit M to, missile to load installed. the missile on the bottom left corner. You can now see it here. It's a uh, poltergeist missile. is a swarm missile. And then I can hit L to launch it once I've targeted somebody, and it will go chase them. I probably don't want to do that right now, as I don't want to be attacking the station. It might piss somebody off. Uh, now, anyway back to the advanced options there. You can rename your ship. You can self-destruct if you really wanted to. I've never actually used that, but you could if you really wanted to. Uh, now, let's see. Should I go to the command console now, or should I look at that later? Um, well, that's a pretty extensive one. So yeah, why don't I just look at it now. Now, for opening the command console, this will show you the various commands you can give to your ship, the current uh, selected ship. Uh, for me, I only have the navigational software installed, so all I can, well, actually, I have no software installed, so I can only order myself to navigate to stations, dock, standby, idle, follow, move to position, and such. Uh, jump to sector gets unlocked when you uh, get a jump drive, return home gets unlocked if you have this uh, ship set to a home. Uh, now, let's go down here. Additional ship commands, these are extra commands, there aren't really any here. Uh, typically, these are uh, you can get them with various software. Now, uh, down in configuration, you can hide from the property menu, which I never do really do. You don't really want to hide them unless it's uh, you have a fleet of ships or something. You just have uh, well, actually, you have them grouped up in one menu for that. Uh, notify me when an order is completed. That is useful for uh, traders in the beginning when you have them set to uh, your own s uh, specific routes, trading routes. Uh, once they're done, once they got to the uh, station and they're ready to trade and whatnot, you can just be notified like I like I was notified here by an incoming message, and I can uh, specifically tell them what to do. Uh, missile fire uh, probability, as it were, and the formation delta. Uh, home base right here. I can set a home base to any uh, station I want to. I don't really bother with that unless I have my own personal station, especially the uh, player headquarters. Uh, add wing, you can add uh, other ships to the uh, wing on this uh, on this ship, which, uh, well, of course, obvious. You can pretty much make a squad with them. And uh, right here we have my friend Foe Meter, the ATF and the Terran. I've, they're the only two I've met since I just started this. And they're currently set to friend. And you can set this globally as well uh, from the global settings. But uh, anyway, now, uh, right here we have the navigation section, which has our sector map, our universe map, our jump drive, and our best buys and best selling locators. That's a completely different plugin, or not plugin, upgrade to their ship as well. Not really useful for this combat ship. Uh, but anyway, you can access the sector map by pressing uh, period, or the universe map by pressing comma. I never really access it via this menu. Uh, so let's open up. Uh, 
the sector map right now. Uh, as you can see, it shows the ship, uh, your own personal ship, and any of your other ships and uh, stations at the top in green, all nice and uh, neon there. And it'll show you once you highlight it exactly where to go. Uh, we have all the various stations right here. You can see these arrows that shows my current target. Uh, these are all the stations here in the sector. You can see uh, a couple gates. The south gate is down way down there. The west gate, north gate, east gate. And uh, right beside it at the bottom, it will tell you exactly where they lead. Uh, okay, and here you can see all the various ships that are it would not with, well, not quite within the sector, but within your visual range. This uh, white bubble here is basically as far as you can actually see. Everything outside of it is in your fog of war, as it were. You cannot see any of that. Uh, all right, you can zoom in, zoom out here uh, with this button. Not not too useful right now, but later it can be. You can uh, select specifically, do I only want to see ships, do I want to see everything, or do I want to see stations? I usually keep it on all, just because. And, uh, yeah. And it'll also show you your various coordinates and whatnot. Uh, now let's load up the uh, universe map here. As you can see, I only have this one sector right now that I have actually found. Otherwise, I'd have a whole bunch more here. Uh, but I'll explore them by going through gates, and there you go, done. There's also, uh, while in the universe map, you can see uh, the race that owns this sector, uh, the security level, this is the core sector, population, how many planets there are there, it's not really useful stuff, but yeah. Uh, the sun's at 150% here, that uh, may affect solar production, as it were. Uh, gate distance, 100 kilometers, home, that's just, yeah, zoom in, zoom out. And then it shows a uh, details about this uh, sector, like lore about the sector. All right. Now, on the top left corner is your personal menu. Now, this is going to be a very important menu. You're going to be accessing this a lot. Uh, you got My Missions, which are your current uh, missions, and you can activate uh, guidance to them. Uh, right now, we have, of course, Investigate Harmony of... Oh, yes, this is an expansion right here. That's probably what I got alerted for for the message. Or uh, right here we have the main quest. Now by going through the main quest and actually uh, following that guy around and such, you will uh, eventually unlock some additional ships. Which is why some people choose to do the uh, main campaign here and then move off and do other things because you get a lot of free ships to begin with. Uh, a lot of combat ships and some really like nice ships. But anyway, let's go back here. Uh, the second menu is my property, another extremely important menu. You can access it by hitting R as well. Uh, this shows all your current property, their location. Uh, you can see every, your stations, your ships, uh, any wings you have, any combat wings you have, uh, sectors, personal stages, uh, statistics, and various other such options. You can set all these different options in here, but I'm not going to get into the options. I, I rarely mess with the options. I leave them at default. That's for just if you really want to get in-depth with it. Uh, let's see here. And then we got to my current pilot status. This has a lot of information. Uh, your current pilot's name, how much time you've played, uh, your account, how much money you have, and such, your current location. Uh, these two titles here are for combat and... Uh, Mer how much of a uh, trader you are, basically combat and trading. The higher these get, the better trading and combat missions you'll get. Uh, right below that, we have our uh, reputation with the various races that we've encountered. I have zero reputation with both, uh, but I'm currently uh, default by default for these guys, a local counselor and an ATF asteroid belt access. So I can at least access the ultra asteroid belt, as it were, but I cannot access any uh, more defended space. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. All right, statistics, uh, start scenario shows the favorite ships, how many shots you fired, missiles fired, hit efficiency. This is all the various statistics, sectors, visits, jump gates, pass, ships bought. Sorry, well that had some uh, minor technical issues there, in which a uh, single clip near the end, ironically, of uh, this section of it, decided it wanted to uh, bug out and go black screen. So we're going to continue from what we were saying. Okay, we're finishing the pilot status. Uh, we have the My Wings section here, where we can assign ships to a uh, wing and uh, have them either follow me or they can uh, run around with each other and uh, go around as an actual group of uh, units, uh, which I don't really t tend to use because they're more like cannon fodder as it is. 
uh, message log. We have the we can view message log, see all the uh, past messages we get or any pings we get, uh, new entries if we need to write anything down. Uh, my achievements, of course, you can see your achievements have been added, added to Steam. And then we get to the important stuff. We got uh, the advanced here, global commands, which I'll get to in a moment. Encyclopedia, if you want to learn a lot more about it, you can change your name, which I would suggest doing if you wish. It's pretty good. Uh, all tips, of course, you can enable tips and export statistics. Uh, so you can actually export your uh, statistics to the EagleSoft website uh, for bragging rights, as it were. Oh, I got a million or a billion credits and 50 uh, capital class ships and a giant empire of stations and whatnot. And I all got it all myself, no cheating and whatnot. But anyway, let's go to global commands. So uh, here we have our global friend foe indicator. We can indicate if we want someone to be a friend or a foe. And this will globally uh, paste onto all of our units if we once we hit uh, transmit to all reachable properties. So it'll be uh, do we just fly past these guys or do we attack them kind of thing? And of course we've got the wind controls and global missile resupply. Tell them exactly how many missiles to collect and why not. And uh, then go on from there. So pretty much they will supply themselves with however many missiles we tell them to. Right of this type. Uh, but anyway. From here, for this part of the mission, we would continue with the uh, actual campaign, which would be talking to the uh, Saber, which, uh, because I had to reload this up again, I don't really have him on my screen right now. He's somewhere around here, though. But either way, we would talk to him, we'd get the mission, we would continue along, get some ships, and uh, then after we're done that, we could uh, just continue on and just do whatever we want to. But anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to transfer over to the uh, humble merchant now, and... Hopefully, we all won't have as much technical difficulties this time. All right, now, let's begin once again here. This is the uh, Humble Merchant start. Now, uh, since we've got all the basic controls down, as it is right now in the interface, uh, we can start actually uh, playing and uh, starting out uh, with a decent, uh, decent strategy. Now, as the Humble Merchant, if I go up to the top left here and go my property, you start out with two ships. Uh, the Discoverer, which you can use to uh, travel around and explore space, and the Mercury, which you can use to uh, trade. It's a really good trading ship. Uh, let's load up the information Mercury on it right now. Mercury is the latest addition to the Argon Merchant Fleet. Indeed it is. And it is a worthy successor to the Argon Lifter. Armed with an aft turret for defensive Turrets. purposes Woo! and increased shield space, the Mercury is more than capable of defending itself. Indeed it is. Now as you can see, unlike your uh, saber for the other campaign, you actually can transport uh, extra large cargo containers as this is a transport ship. And rather than the uh, measly 90 units that you could carry in the other one, you can carry 3,000 units in this ship. And that's just right now. That's not even the max. Uh, you start out with five, uh, one 5 megajoule shield, which is... Uh, not even close to your maximum capacity. You can have a max of three times 25 megajoule shields. Uh, current max speed is only 75. You are a lot slower. This is a transport ship after all. So you're going to be going extremely slow. Uh, acceleration, the turning radius, everything is a lot slower on this ship and a lot of it can be upgraded. Uh, as you can see, you can have a maximum of 4,000 units on this ship. Not bad, not bad. And you have one turret, which is basically you can't really, you can fire that turret, but I tend to leave it and just uh, let it automatically attack my enemies. Uh, I do not believe I have any actual lasers right now on this ship, so I cannot actually equip it and show you what to do with it. But I will at least uh, let you know here, or at least show you. Uh, once you get one of these ships, you can see the compatible laser right here: impulse ray meters, particle accelerator cannons. You can add a tractor beam repair laser if you can actually find them phased, re uh, pretty much all this stuff right here uh... you would go to the uh... Whoop, my ship advanced uh... weapons and you would equip it to the bay and uh... then you would go to uh... my ship autopilot commands console and uh... right here in the turret commands for back turret you could set it to specifically attack your target if you get fight command software, you'll get a lot more uh, options here, such as defend my ship and whatnot, attack all enemies on site. Uh, now, anyway, for actually exploring this initial area here, uh, you want to look for uh, good uh, sources of money to begin with. I like to start with uh, a basic one, energy cells. Uh, as you can see in my property menu, I start out with, not my property, uh, my pilot status, I start out with 9,000 credits, not much. 
uh, but it's enough to get started. So I like to really start out with energy cells. It's the basic commodity in the universe. But as we can see here, there are no uh, solar power plants in this area at all. There's just, yeah, uh, a bunch of other stations. We got ore mines, we got uh, high yield production complexes and whatnot. We can select one, put ore the info on it. We can see they're very low on uh, on energy cells uh, because we don't have a. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna let her talk first because it's just interrupting me a bit. With special scanners yes, they are. Richness and minerals. Indeed. Now, anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, right here, we can see that it's generally full, but we can't tell specifically how much they have on it until we. Uh, let's see. Let's try this one here. Or mine. M. Or mines are mainly yep, you can't tell specifically how much they have mines. of the uh, resource okay. until you dock with it, or if you get uh, trading system extension, which is something I recommend to get immediately, as fast as you can. Now, let's see if the Free Argon Trading Station A should have A Argon one. Space Station used throughout Argon no, Federation like territory. Developed by Argon over many years, these hmm. space stations... That is a shame. Now, originally to explore some of these sectors and find some trading opportunities, you're going to want to fly around this lovely little discoverer that has been provided for you. It is going to be your exploratory ship. You can also sell it right off the bat if you wish, and just to just to get trading to give you a lot more initial funds. This will allow you to uh, supply your uh, main ship. Now right there I just ejected myself. I could have also do... Uh, I could also eject it from the bottom left, but I preferred Shift D. Now you can see the Mercury right here, the trading ship. Pretty nice. Now this, uh, you're in your spacesuit right now. This works just like piloting your ship. W A S D to float around, and uh, X and Z to uh, increase your acceleration. Now to get back into a ship, you need to select it, and then use uh, Shift E to go into the ship when you're close enough, or you can click on it. And uh, actually, what I'm gonna do it that way. Let me show it that way. Eject from the ship. Yes, I wish to eject from the ship. Or you can click on the ship with the space discoverer and uh, enter the ship. This is also used to claim ships this way. Now, this ship goes a lot faster, so I'll be able to get where I need to go and uh, figure everything out. Now, I'm going to want to load this up here and take a look at what the gates are in this area. Now, uh, people might not know uh, where exact what exactly all these uh, lead to begin with, but uh, south, the south gate leads to Argon Prime, which Argon uh, is Prime. basically the uh, core sector for this area, so I'm going to want to go there right now. As you can see, the little jets in the front there as the ship is uh, adjusting itself to uh, the course. Now, one of the uh, actually items I did not mention in controls is the SATA. You can activate that by pressing J, which speeds up time and makes, it go a makes things a lot faster, as it were. Uh, looks like the settings on this one are still it's set to 6%, so it goes to 600% instead of 1,000. But yeah, it allows you to go from point A to point B a lot faster. I'm going to have uh, the ship currently follow me, as the area I'm going to has a lot of energy cells for buying. So I'm going to just select it in the... Uh, well, I'm going to show you, I'm going to start with the cell. I'm going to load up the sector menu. I'm going to, with the period of course, I'm going to select uh, the Mercury in the uh, menu here. I'm going to give it some orders, and I could go into the command console, but it has some basic orders right here. I need it to follow me, command accepted. so I can click that, and it will automatically start following me. All right, so let's keep going here, and uh, head on through this gate. I'm just going to keep uh, keep recording this portion as it's going to not going to take me that long to get to the gate here. Go 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 go. But eventually there will be, uh, you'll want to trade a lot of other s other products such as ores and, uh, whoop, ores, weapons, missiles, stuff like that. But for now, we're just going to start out with energy cells. Zoom, teleporting through the wormhole. Entering system, Argon Prime. Why, thank you. Now, from here, you've got, this is a new sector. This is your first new sector. You have not explored any of it. So everything that you first, that you find now is going to pop up on your menu. Gates as well, you will have to locate and get close enough to in order for them to pop up on your menu. 
Uh, now there's a lot of really good uh, places on this uh, in this sector that you will want to find. Uh, one of them is the shipyard, which is right down there, and the other is the equipment dock, which is where you'll get a lot of your beginning equipment. I'm probably going to want to stop my uh, my little freighter there and give it the trading system extension right off the bat. Now I could fly closer to the equipment dock or the, to the shipyard here and just get it on my map. That way I have it as it is. I think I'll just do that quickly. And there we go. Now it's on my map. Now I'm going to quickly explore all of the gates here. Just to uh, have them on my map. That way I can uh, either if I get a jump drive I can warp to them. Or I know that they're there and lead to other sectors and I can go explore them later and figure out what's there to trade and have fun with. Alright. So let's uh, get this one on my map. Come on, faster, faster. It would be nice if I had a uh, better scanner on this ship as well. If you're going to keep this exploratory ship, I would definitely suggest that you give it a much better scanner uh, so that you can truly explore a sector in like half the time, if not, if not less. Now I already have the south gate on my uh, radar here, but I do not have it on my map, so I'm going to quickly access it. Ah yes, here comes my lovely ship now. So I'm going to send it off to that trade uh, or to that equipment Mercury. dock. I can also click him in the screen here. Uh, any any uh, ship you see on the uh, side of the screen here, you can click Argon. on it to select it as well. Food. Mercury. I like to use that instead of going through all the menus. Now I'm going to order him command console. I have to go to the command console for this to navigate dock at Argon Prime, which is the sector we're in and the equipment dock. Docking granted. Command accepted. And he will now go there and he will dock in that station. And uh, if I had a trading system extension on this ship... Actually, I think I could just order him there regardless. Okay, I don't need the trading system extension, I don't think. Okay. Let's Safe. see, is that now... Home of light. Yep, that is now on my map. Okay, good. Now, the final gate over here is the gate I want to actually go through. It leads to the uh, the wall, as it were. It's the actual name of the sector. All right, so we're going to zoom on over to that gate while we wait for our little friendly uh, transport here to dock with the equipment dock. But yes, actually, I think I do need the trading system extension in order to uh, do this without actually myself docking there as well. But we will find out momentarily. All right. Let's see here. Should be docking any second now. Hopefully. Bingo. As you can see, he has now disappeared off my map. Now, in order to find him, I could go through the menus and go to my property and whatnot. Or I can select the station itself. As you can see, landed ships has one. And I can select my Mercury from there. Ah, now it looks like I can. I don't need the trading, trading system extension on my own guy. Good. Or no, no, I do need the trading system extension. Okay, I thought so. All right, so I'm going to have to do that manually then. Now, we have this uh, located here. So, you know what? For now, I'm just going to tell him to follow me. Argon then. equipment dock. Uh, landed ships, Mercury, orders, follow Command me. Command accepted. But otherwise, I would dock with that. I would tell him to trade, and then I would uh, get him to get the trading system extension. And possibly myself. But as it is uh, fairly expensive right now, it costs at least a couple of thousand and we only have 9,000 to work with. We want to save as much as we can to get as much profit as we can to begin with. All right. Now, of course, with trading and whatnot, it falls under the basic principle of buy low, sell high. It's uh, incredibly easy to earn a profit off of uh, energy cells to begin with in the beginning. Uh, these right here, these floating disks, are the solar production plants. These are the ones you're going to want to find. Uh, as you can see, if I load up the world map here, or the universe map, we started at Huron's Nebula, we went south, we could have also gone east to this sec sector right here and gone down. Either way works. I like to explore Argon to begin with, though, to get all those uh, various uh, stations unlocked and ready to go. Ready to send ships to. Now, uh, we could send all of our guys, because the demand right now is in Huron's Nebula. So we're going to have our guy trade here, buy a lot of energy cells, and then we're going to have them go back to Huron's Nebula and uh, sell them to the various stations. And that's how we're going to make our profit to begin with. 
You can also go uh, continue going south, which will lead you to... Uh, let's load up the sector here. Which will lead you to... Uh, let's see, what is the sector called? Uh, Home of Light. And uh, one more south from there will lead to the Ore Belt, which is another good sector to trade to. It also has... Uh, also has solar power plants and a bunch of uh, mines and I like to trade from there and head uh, what is it west one and then south one and trade with the uh, Paranids a new ray a different race that we have seen uh, so far or then we have seen so far now solar power plant L alpha indeed it is a solar power plant but anyway let's dock with this uh, for now so we can see what uh, stat What's the status on its? Uh, well, we could just go I and then Solar U, power plants and we see it's about halfway. But it doesn't really show any specifics, and it's full in crystals, so it's going to produce it really. It's going to produce uh, crystals really, or produce uh, resources pretty darn quickly. Now, in order to dock with a station, which is something we haven't covered yet, you need to select it, uh, be within communication range, which is 24 kilometers. Uh, I like to be a lot closer before I do it, though. And then you need to hit C you are talking to communicate to the with it. Automated interaction system. Make your request. And from here you can call you can communicate with anyone on board or what we want to do, request permission to land. Positive. Please dock as soon as you get green position lights. You can also use the auto dock which we covered before. Uh, then you'll get these green little lights here. Now uh, you could follow the lights if you really wanted to, but you don't have to. You just have to uh, move yourself close and slow down within about uh, 40 meters a second at most and uh, there you go once you hit the end uh, green light you will dock on behalf of our president and senator the Argon Federation now you can see the trade menu is no longer uh, grayed out to local trading network established now from here we can barter with other uh, people that are docked or just sitting here you can see the resources that they have up for offer and whatnot uh, this is one way that you can make yourself a uh, good amount of profit. Uh, or if you just, just to get resources that you need really, really fast. Attention, oh, medical emergency crews report to docking bay 8 immediately. Indeed. Uh, now we have the trade menu, which is what we want to access as it is right now. And we can see energy cells here are currently energy going at uh, 17 credits apiece. Yes, they are. The whole known universe. They the unification are very useful. of the energy storage specifications allows for interstellar trading mm -hmm. with this most basic of all products. Indeed, that is very true. Uh, now, at the credits as it is, there aren't very many energy cells here, so it's at 17 apiece, you can see right here. And it will take up one volume per cell. And uh, the TC shows how large it is. It's a small resource, so every single ship, even this ship that I'm in right now, could carry this resource. Uh, the crystals here we see are a medium resource, and they take up four a piece, and uh, they're worth a lot. Uh, now, I, I typically wouldn't buy uh, energy cells at this high of a price right now. I typically like to buy them around 12, 13, if at all possible. That's about as low as it can go, or at least about 14, 15. That that's pretty much guarantees you a good profit. 17 is a little. That's a little iffy. Typically, you'll find places buying them at around 18, 19 a piece. Uh, sometimes more than that. So that's not really a good way to make money right now off of this one. So let's go try the uh, other. Oh wow, well, my ship is already here. I'm surprised that slow ship managed to get here so quickly. All right, so let's look at the other. Uh, whoop! Solar power plant in this sector. Where is it at? We've got to locate it. Let's get away from the station so we can get a better view. There we go. Now, I'm still not seeing it. It's probably on the other side of this one here. Being blocked out. So let's use the SATA and zoom along here. Alright, now... Woo! Where is that? Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Now I found it. Alright, perfect. So let's speed on up here. Solar power plant. M beta. Solar also up the information. Ah, we can see right here that it has very few very little uh, 
Well, we could see from that menu that it had very little crystals and very little energy cells, so we're not going to be able to get a profit from that one either. That one's probably much more expensive as well, probably 19, 18 credits a piece. Uh, so we're going to want to just go with what we got here right now. We could just sit here for about for a couple minutes with the state on, and uh, the prices, the the, pro the production will go continue, and the prices will go down. Mercury. For now, let's uh, order our mercury to dock at that uh, solar power plant. Docking granted. Command there we accepted. Go. Put on our brakes and wait for him to actually dock. Uh, by which time we might actually uh, get an increase in the amount of credits there. As you can see, he's uh, he's trying to get there. The uh, autopilot can be a little buggy at times. It'll take them a while, which is why I prefer to physically pilot the trade ships myself, so I can uh, greatly speed up their uh, travel time. Uh, typically, you're going to want to be just kick back with a SATA for a while uh, while you're going from gate to gate, because it does take a lot of time with these uh, trade ships. It can be a bit boring, but the profit is worth it. Because you don't want any, uh, especially if you see any enemy, uh, or I shouldn't say enemy, I should say rival traders trying to dock with the station. You can actually snipe, uh, like, well, I call it snipe. You can uh, take the uh, trade opportunity out from under them if you sp specifically pilot it yourself, dock a lot faster than they will, and uh, then quickly trade out the resource. Otherwise, they're going to do it. The price is going to go up, like, exponentially, and you're going to have to pay a lot for the resource or just completely waste your entire time getting to that station to trade. So I greatly recommend uh, for starting out piloting your trade ship yourself. For now though I'm just going to wait for the sucker to actually dock. I should have just ejected out and piloted it myself as I said. But he will be in there momentarily. As he is in the docking lane now. There we go. So Alright, now let's you dock with it myself. Please dock as docking granted. Spin myself. I don't need to spin myself to orientate myself with the station but I like to. It's just something I do. So I'm going to wait for him to dock. And then I will dock myself here. Or whichever will happen first. We'll find out here in a second. Oh, looks like I docked first. Successfully docked. On behalf of our president and senator, the Argon Federation welcomes you aboard. Why, well, thank you. to local trading network established. Now, if I were to hit trade right now, I'd only be trading for the ship I'm currently in. But as you can see, we have two landed ships. Now, if you're in the station yourself with the other ship and you want to trade for the other ship, uh, to do that, you would go landed ships, uh, select on the Mercury, just one of the ways to do it, Egosoft and trade. Like to thank you for buying their product. Indeed, I enjoy this game energy from Eaglesoft. As you can see, energy yeah. Let's, let's not select that right now. Now, as you can see, the crystal... Let's just keep trading between them just so to keep her from talking right now. Uh, the price of them has gone down a credit apiece. So that is really good. Uh, I like to see that. Now, 16 is at least a decent price to be trading them at. I can make a decent profit off of that. So I'm going to do it. Do so. Now, I can select right Energy here. Cells are the unified or I can... Insufficient credits. Or I can use the uh, arrow keys to select specifically how much I want. As you can see, I cannot fill up my inventory right now with this. I can only have 571 energy cells. Uh, so I'm going to say okay, I want that energy to be good. That's good. Bought. Also from this menu, you have gained recognition. I just gained my first recognition by trading. I'm a now a Federation member and whatnot. Okay, I can also do some other things from this. I can, uh, let's see, landed ships. Or is landed ships? Yes, landed ships, Mercury. And, uh, let's see, advanced. Now from this advanced menu, I can change to that ship. I can freight exchange, freight exchange between these ships, or specifically tell it which uh, ship in the dock to exchange with uh, out of my ships. If I have multiple ships here. Uh, right now I'm going to switch ships as I know where I want to go now. And I'm going to undock from the station. Now, I need to find a good place to trade uh, these resources that I have now uh, acquired. So I'm going to want to go back to where I was before. Of course, as I said, the ship is a lot slower. So I'm going to cut out this, uh, cut out this recording now, and I'm going to uh, restart it back when I when I get back to Herion's Nebula. Uh, of course, I'm going to pilot through this gate, the West Gate, myself, and then I'm going to pilot through the North Gate myself in order to speed up the transition time. And uh, I will restart this when I get there. Incoming message. And apparently, I have an incoming message. Huzzah.
All right, now that we have finally made it to the uh, sector here, we can find uh, exactly uh, which stations are lacking energy cells the most and sell them to them, making as much of a profit as we can. Uh, as you can see right now in my current window, we have these mysterious little icons over all of these stations. These are missions. Uh, you can uh, communicate with the station and the person giving these missions and uh, take them on. Uh, these are a good way to make credits depending on the type of missions and what they require you to do. Uh, a lot of them have the ha do have time limits. Well, pretty much they all have time limits, with the exception of some story missions. And as well as that, you can actually see, even though you're doing the Hubble Merchant, you can still do some of the actual story missions. It's just they're in Omnicrom Lyrae, and it will take you a long time to get there unless you know exactly where to go. it would be a lot of exploring. Now, anyway, we need to find a station here that is desperately in need of energy cells. So let's start with Kahuna Bakery. Kahuna bakeries are huge uh, we can see right here it's not really hurting for energy cells. So let's try the high yield production complex. This production facility also, manufactures uh, oh no, they're, high they're not too bad. But they're not extremely hurting. Let's try uh, Ormine M Alpha. Ore mines are mainly now built they are extremely hurting for uh, because of the higher extremely price. hurting for energy cells. So we're going to dock ourselves at the ore mine. So we're going to select them in menu, ore select them as our target. Alpha. And now we're going to fly ourselves towards them. Uh, you're going to want to fly towards the actual uh, part that uh, looks man-made on the ra ast asteroid. Excuse me. And uh, that will be where you dock. Even though the selector is right there, you'll be docking over in this area. Alright. Now, there's a lot of different types of missions that you can do. And I would definitely suggest uh, communicating and exploring them. I might swap on over to the... Uh, actually, I will probably do that as well. I'll probably swap on over to the Terran side of things again. And uh, do those, some of those missions there. Or I might do it on this one. It depends. We shall see. We shall see. Uh, but anyway, our whole point, our whole job right now is to trade. We need to make some profits. Otherwise, we're going to be in a bad spot. So we want to communicate, dock, Please dock as soon as you and get start slowing down a bit. As we slow down extremely slowly in this ship. And we don't want to crash with the station. That would be extremely bad for both your ship and your relationship, relationship with the station and race. So yeah, slow down to about 20, I'm going to slow down to about 20 meters a second. And there we go. See, it's a lot faster than auto docking. Successfully docked. On behalf of our president now let us trade. Senator, the Argon Federation welcomes you aboard. Thank you. Connection to local trading network established. Now we want to select the energy cells, which are worth 19 apiece. So we're going to make, cells uh, are the unified we're gonna make three uh, three credits of profit a piece for every single cell we have on us. Now we're going to want energy to either select right here or drag it with arrow keys ourselves and sell. Sold. You now, are being promoted. yay! I got promoted, journeyman. Now we just keep doing that back and forth. Uh, as you can see, we didn't really get much energy cell or much much cash from that. We started out with nine. We just gained about a thousand wasn't that much. Uh, to increase our profit we could of course take a mission. Uh, let's see here. We Right over there that is a uh, station building mission. There's no way in hell we're going to be able to do that. Right All here we have a trading mission. So Gamma. let's calm them and see what it's about. I heard you were looking for help so you select them and then go I heard you looking for help. What do you need? Now he wants me to I could probably do that. So he wants me to dock at the Swarm Missile Production Complex in Argon Prime, talk to a guy, and then take 45 uh, medical equipment back to this ore mine. And the reward, it's a difficulty very easy. The reward is 1,340 credits, and the time left is 30 minutes to do that. Uh, considering I've only made a thousand and going to two different sectors, I, that is a good way to get a little bit of initial cash. So let's do that mission for now. This will be a basic tutorial on just getting the missions done. So we need to get there ASAP. So let's quickly zoom our ship maximum speed through this gate here. 
Alright, now this I'm probably going to leave this part live, as it were, and then I will stop it and fly myself to the station, which is going to take a much longer period of time. Uh, hopefully not less than 15 minutes, because if you can get there in half the time, or less than half the time, then you have a good chance of getting back. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to make it, and yeah, you're going to fail the mission, and you just wasted your time. So it's always good to judge how fast your ship is, if you can get there in time to the location, and get back. Alright. Now they will send us a message. Okay, I already got that message. Upon completion of it with our various credits. So let's zoom through here. And wormhole! Woo! Wormhole! Entering system. All right. Argon Prime. The wall. The wall. Now, in order to uh, get this guidance here, we're going to want to select my missions, transport mission, and activate guidance. That will now show us exactly where we need to go. So we need to get Swarm to Swarm missile production complex. Alpha. Swarm missile production complex. Way over there. Now, we can also see under that menu how much time we have left to complete this mission. We have 25 minutes. I'm not sure if we can make it, to be honest, even though it's a very mission. It's funny, they really haven't balanced these out enough with the, very, with the, very, with the difficulty and the amount of time they give you. Uh, so I do not think the ship is fast enough. I might barely make it. But anyway, I'm going to quickly get to there, and I'm going to at least do that. So one moment, I will be back, in, back again. All right, now I have finally uh, almost made it to this station here, but as I thought... Uh, the station was just too far away from uh, where the where the gate was. I only have 15 minutes left to uh, complete it, and I just now got just now getting here. Still haven't even docked, so there's no way that I can actually complete this mission. Uh, as such, I can go my mission, select, and abort mission. Uh, and that way, I just get rid of it, and I don't have to do it right now. Uh, anyway, it w that was a bit of a waste of time, though. But that's basically how you would do a mission. I would dock with it. I would communicate with the guy. Uh, he would put the stuff in my inventory, or in my cargo hold, and then I would proceed back to the location. Uh, now, I would probably want to keep trading energy cells for a while, then look for other commodities to uh, trade around and whatnot. Uh, you can automate this process. Just fly around with your discoverer, exploring. By uh, Actually, let me... Since I don't really have my discoverer here right now, I'm just going to eject from my ship, plain and simple. He's going to fly away from me. Mercury. I can tell him, order him, command console, uh, trade, manual trade. I could just do manual trade buy, which is one of, uh, due to his trading system extension. Solar power plant L, energy cells, which is the commodity. And I'll tell him to buy... Oh, he bought maybe 500 before, so he doesn't have enough money, but I'll tell him to buy a thousand. And accepted. he will buy as many as he can. And then I can tell him to manual sell wherever I want him to. So back in the asteroid belt. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty much it for now. I am now a floating dude in space. I am doomed to float forever. Uh, or I could order my discoverer to come pick me up. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, good for now. Good basic guide. I hope you've all enjoyed. And uh, yeah, keep flying and enjoy space, peoples.